Um, okay, so here is our painting for today. We'll be working, this is a square, but we'll be working with a uh, landscape orientation today. So like I said, long side, horizontal. Um, and this is a painting, and then I have the reference photo pulled up on my computer here so that I can kind of refer to this as well. This is a photo that I took um, in Washington. Super pretty sunset. It's really fun to recreate, so we're going to have a great time with this. And I'll kind of be referring back to the reference photo. I'll show it to you as we're painting so that you can see that too. But mostly I'll just be kind of talking you through the instructions. Okay, and then as we go, I will also try my best to answer questions um, as we work. Um, if I don't get to your question, I do have to kind of, you know, talk and paint and, and teach you at the same time. So if I don't get to your question, feel free to ask again. Um, or if someone else in the comments knows the answer, feel free to shout it out. Um, and don't forget to sip as well. So as we get started here, um, go ahead and take a large brush and put a little drop of water in each one of your watercolor paints. And this will help start to dissolve them and get them ready to paint with. Um, it's really hard to pick up pigment from dry watercolor pans. So I just take my brush and put a drop of water in each color. We may not use each color, but I want them to be ready just in case. Um, and then just to go over my materials really quick so that you know, my paints are Windsor Newton professional watercolor paints. You do not have to use those. Whatever you have is totally fine. My paper is uh, Strathmore watercolor paper. Let me see if I can show you the front. This is pretty cheap watercolor paper, but it's good quality. So if you're looking for just some like good watercolor paper for practice, this is a good option. Here's what the front looks like. I think this pad is nine by 12 and it's usually like five to $7. So it's a good, um, it's a good deal if you're looking for some watercolor paper. And then my brushes are Princeton Neptune brushes, always. These are my favorite brushes. They are a little bit more expensive, but they hold up so well. I've had these for like two years, probably over two years now, and they don't like shed hairs. They don't lose their shape, all of that stuff. So highly recommend. And then I've just got masking tape around the edge. It's uh, from Blick. You can use whatever masking tape you have. Um, and I think that's all my materials. So if you have any questions about those, my uh, Amazon storefront has all of my art supplies that I would recommend. So you check that out and um, you can see all of my recommendations with little notes that I have on them. Okay, so as we start painting, um, the first thing that we need to find is our horizon line. In the reference photo, it's probably about a third of the way up the paper. So just for, you know, to be a little bit more exact, excuse me, um, I'll probably use just a ruler here and find approximately a third. I'll go like two and a quarter inches up. And I just mark that on both sides and then I connect the dots in the middle with my ruler. You do not have to be this exact. If you don't have a ruler, just kind of eyeball a straight line um, about a third of the way up your paper. If you do have a ruler, feel free to use it and find a horizon line. Make that a pretty light mark. We don't want it to be too um, too dark yet. Okay, and then one other option for you, since we're gonna paint the sky first, is to put a piece of tape on the horizon line. Um, and this will give us a perfectly straight horizon line without having to paint it. So I'm just gonna split this tape in half so that I have two pieces and then I just put the straight edge right underneath the horizon line. And this way we'll get a lovely straight horizon line. Also, as we work here, if you do have a little extra time to double tap the screen, it sends me likes and it helps me out with the algorithm. We're already up to 5,000 likes, which is wonderful, um, but it just helps me out. So if you have a little extra time, just double tap that screen. All right, now we need to mix our colors and we're gonna do the sky in kind of two layers. I'll show it to you here. Here's the reference photo. So if you can kind of ignore the clouds, we have this sort of gradient going from this blue to this light pink um, here at the horizon line. So we're gonna paint that gradient first and then we're going to add the clouds on top. So we'll mix a couple of colors to get that started. First thing you need is kind of a peachy pink so I'm going to mix, I have magenta and I'm gonna mix a little bit of orange into that. Whatever like pink and orange or red and orange that you have in your palette, that will work perfectly fine. Pink and a little orange. 
mostly pink though. And I will swatch this for you as well. So here is that color, very vibrant pink. We're gonna be, it'll be watered down. So you want to have a pretty strong color to start. Then we need um, kind of a really pale yellow color. And so I'm just gonna tap like a little yellow ochre and it's going to be mostly water. So add plenty of water to this color. Should just be kind of an orangey yellow color. Something like that. And then we need our sky blue color. And I like to just use, I'm just gonna use ultramarine for this, um, whatever blue that you have that you like, you're welcome to use. And this one should be a little bit more saturated. So a little less water, more pigment should be a pretty strong color. Okay, something like that. So there's our sky, sky color palette. And then one more color that we're going to mix is the color of the uh, clouds. So this is going to be an even darker sort of bluish gray. So I'm gonna mix blue and a little bit of brown together. You can also use Payne's gray if you have that. Blue and a touch of brown. And if you're feeling fancy, maybe just a touch of magenta or red. And you'll get this dark purple gray color. Something like that. You can see the difference there between the sky. I'll go over these one more time. This is pink. This is um, magenta and orange mixed together. So pink and orange mix, mixed together. This one's just yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of any other yellow that you have there. Ultramarine blue. This one's ultramarine blue, a little bit of brown and a little bit of pink. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of time, mix those colors, get them ready in your um, palette and you should be mixing quite a bit of each color like you want to make sure you have plenty of each so that we don't run out of paint as we're painting so make sure you're still adding some water to each color um, use a big brush all of that good stuff you should not be using a small brush right now you should be using a big brush okay so as you finish mixing those colors, I'm just going to kind of tell you the plan of attack here. So we're going to start with this blue, the sky blue color, not the cloud color, the sky blue color. And we're going to use horizontal strokes and cover about a third of this sky section. So about that much. And then we're going to add a little bit of water to our brush. And so that we get a nice lighter blue, fill in about two thirds of our sky section. Then we're going to add a little stripe of yellow and then a little stripe of pink at the bottom. And we're going to do all of that at once so that the um, colors kind of mix together and we get a nice gradient. So I'm not going to have time to pause in between those colors and you shouldn't either because you need to do them all at once. So that's why I'm telling you now. That's kind of the plan of attack here. And once you're ready, you're going to do all of those steps at once. And I will talk you through it as I do as, as I go as well. You're welcome to watch me and then catch up afterwards if you'd like to. Okay, so like I said, start with your sky blue color. Use a big brush and just start with horizontal strokes at the top. And we'll start kind of filling in this top section. And remember, like I said, we're gonna fill in about a third. So that's about a third. Then I'm going to just dump my brush in my water, pick up some water keep with the horizontal stripes, dump my brush in the water again, continue with the horizontal stripes. You can kind of go back up the painting in horizontal stripes if you want to blend things together a little bit better. Then now that we've covered two thirds, I'm going to clean off my brush, grab some yellow and just put a little yellow stripe here. Get that blending with the blue. There we go, just a little bit more. And then last, I'm gonna take some pink and put that at the very bottom. And then like I said, you can kind of go back up 
painting using horizontal strokes. I would recommend using a damp brush, a clean damp brush to do that. And just start at the bottom and work your way back up the painting to blend all of that together. I would recommend only doing this like once because after that you'll start getting some weird textures. So it's okay if it's not perfectly smooth, this takes practice. Even when you have lots of practice, you'll probably still get a little bit of texture, so it's fine. We're gonna cover it up with paint with uh, clouds later. So there's our um, sky gradient background, and then we're gonna add some clouds on top of that, but you go ahead and do that first. And I will answer questions as you finish up doing that. Yep, these are watercolors. There is watercolor gouache, but that is more of an opaque paint. You can water it down to act like watercolor, but this is just pure watercolor today. Which paper? It is a Strathmore watercolor paper. Um, and as you finish up, let me know in the comments, if, if you're painting with me, let me know in the comments if you're ready to move on or if you need another minute or two. My blue and yellow made a strip of green. That's okay, that happens, and you can cover it up later with the clouds, so don't worry. Um, that is why we put that water in there. Um, after we're done with the blue section, we put some water at the bottom of it, and then we start with the, with the yellow. Um, and that's also why we use a very light yellow. <laughs> but that's okay, that's just something that you learn. What kind of brush? These are, I'm using Princeton Neptune brushes. Haven't seen the paint and zips for ages. I was working on a different project. I was working on a watercolor book, actually, and it was taking up a lot of my time. So I really couldn't, uh, I really could not do this um, along with all of my other tasks and uh, paint and zips. So that's why we're back now. The watercolor book is mostly done. So that's why we can do this. Do you prefer cake versus two watercolors? Um, so I usually, you know, I started with the cake watercolors here, the pans, and then when I run out of a color, I refill it with a tube watercolor and just let it dry, and that works perfectly fine. So I'd probably prefer that because it's more cost effective. The book is getting released next April, which is super exciting. I'll be posting about it a lot. You're going to get annoyed with me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. We got to kind of keep it moving here so that we can get through the whole painting. Um, we're going to switch to our cloud color. And what I want you to do is take a little bit of cloud color and then water it down just a little bit in a separate pan so that we have two versions. One of them is watered down and one of them is that strong color that we mixed before. And with this watered down color and a really nice big brush, we're gonna add some streaky clouds. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We've got, so we've got these sort of sharper clouds, and then in the background, we've got these streaky clouds that are much softer, and that's what we want this watered down color for. Okay, so use your big brush and that watered down color, and you're gonna be brave and just put in some nice streaky clouds like this. These are kind of going in the background, so don't worry too much about what they look like. Just use kind of a light touch Add some, so that there's some texture that kind of shows up there. Just a few streaky clouds around there. Something like that. Thank you guys. Yeah, the water it's a watercolor instructional book. Thank you all for your compliments. I appreciate it. Okay, and then once you're done with those streaky clouds, you're gonna switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to switch to a four round brush and we're gonna make these, um, some of these sharper, more in focus and closer up clouds with our water or our saturated cloud color. And while we let these streaky clouds dry, we're going to kind of work around them for a minute. So I'm going to work up here. And the technique that I like to use for these clouds is to put down kind of a section of like circular fluffy shapes like this. Don't do too much. And then I'm going to clean off my brush and dry it off just a little bit so it's still a little bit damp. 
and then blend out the bottom of that section that I just painted. And then we will do that several times to kind of build up some clouds and build up the texture. So we'll kind of work in several different areas at once. So I'm gonna do some down here. And again, clean off, dry off slightly my brush and then use that damp brush to blend out the bottom of that section. So I'm keeping that top edge sharp and blending out the bottom with the sky. Okay, I'm gonna continue adding some, kind of going this way. Just make sure you're changing up that texture. You can make it more streaky, you can make it more fluffy. Um, you can add just some little dots kind of by themselves to look like some clouds that are kind of off by themselves. Stuff like that. And just do a little section, clean off your brush, dry it off part way, and blend out the bottom. Something like that. Another texture that you can do is called a dry brushing texture. So what you're gonna do is add some color to your brush and then touch your paper towel so that most of the color is now off your brush. You just have a little bit left and with that sort of side of the brush, you can scrape it along the paper. And as it runs out of paint, you'll get that really nice broken texture. And that's really good for some really subtle, light, wispy clouds. Like that. Okay, so those are kind of your steps. Just kind of continue with adding these clouds. As a section dries, you can kind of come back to it and add a little bit more, like how I'm doing there. And I'll show you the reference photo real quick as well. I have, I'm kind of concentrating these clouds up here, and then we're gonna add some here once the streaky clouds dry. So we're gonna add some down here but I'm working on the ones up here while that section dries. But don't let that like stop you from adding clouds where you want clouds. You don't have to follow the reference photo. It's just a reference photo and you can put clouds wherever you want them. Hopefully this is all making sense. Let me know if you have any questions. And we'll just work on some clouds for a little while. I really enjoy painting clouds. They're quite free and they can look a lot of different ways. So you don't, there's not really a lot of pressure to like make them look perfect. Clouds have lots of different shapes. And so you can make them look pretty much any way you want. <laughs> and, um, and they will look like clouds, more or less. What do you mean by texture? Uh, when I talk about texture, I mean these sort of different marks. So um, like this here, the smooth you know, wash of paint is a different texture from these sort of fluffy layered um, areas of paint. So that's the different texture that I'm kind of talking about here. And when you're watercolor painting, you want to mix different textures together. Um, a, to kind of imitate what nature actually looks like, and B, to add interest in your painting. So it's not all, you know, one smooth painting. You want some areas where you have some smooth brush strokes, and then you want some areas that have um, sort of these choppy brush strokes, and some areas that are blended out, and some areas that are not. It just helps to kind of add interest to the painting and make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just kind of doing that, if that makes sense. My clouds are like mountains. So that might mean you need to add a little bit more um, of this sort of fluffy texture here and not, you know, pick up your brush a little bit more is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just kind of making dots and forming those into cloud shapes, if you can see that there. 
how dry does that lower part have to be? It doesn't even need to be all that dry. It is totally fine to start painting on it if it's a little bit damp. Um, you might get a little bit of bleeding, but again, that's just another kind of fun texture that you'll end up getting. I'll probably move down here now and start adding some clouds here. So you can see I'm kind of just dotting my brush and making this um, fun texture with my, by picking up and putting down my brush really quickly. I like to add some streaks in there too, with a really light touch of brush. So again, same concept down here, put down a section of clouds and blend it out. And this is the opportunity that you have um, when you're putting in these clouds to cover up anything that you don't want showing <laughs> in the final painting. So if you have a little spot of texture in that first sky layer that we did that you don't like, put a strategic cloud <laughs> nearby or on top of to cover it up because that's how watercolor works. And you gotta make it work for you. Are you going with a circular motion for the clouds? I'm kind of doing a circular dotting motion. So I'm kind of dotting in a circular manner, a little bit randomly. You don't want to make it look too perfect. You got to let your hand and your brush kind of go where they want to sometimes, just to give yourself a little bit more of a random, random brush strokes, random texture. And you can keep adding clouds all the way down to, I would say, probably about here. That's kind of where they end in the reference photo. And as we get down towards the horizon line, you want these clouds to be thinner, so squished uh, vertically, and then um, kind of streakier. So I like to add these really light um, horizontal strokes. Let the brush kind of skim over the top of the paper and get those little um, and get those little textures like, like that right there. Yes, you can see the reference photo. Again, I don't want you to get too caught up with the reference photo because it doesn't need to look exactly like it, but I'll show it to you again. So we're kind of working our way down, adding these streaky clouds. You can see these are much thinner down here than these up here. That'll give you good perspective. So make these clouds super thin and streaky, and then these ones up here fluffy and large. Okay, so just continue working at your own pace. You can also, as we get down to the bottom of the page, you can use a water, more watered down color, watered down cloud color, and add some streaky clouds with that so that they're not quite as strong as the ones with the um, really dark blue. So I like to do some of these. This is that dry brushing texture that I was talking about here as my brush is running out of paint. You can see it's not quite an even brush stroke. The paint is breaking over the paper texture. And that's a really cool um, texture that's good for clouds. Okay. And if you feel like you are done, like if you feel like you've added enough clouds and it looks good to you, feel free to stop. You don't have to keep going. Um, you know, sometimes you can't add too many clouds. So, so if you feel like you're in a good spot, don't make me, don't feel like I'm making you continue to paint clouds. It's your own painting and you can add as many or as few clouds as you'd like. And also, um, if we do happen to move on before you're done, you can always come back to this uh, sky section later because we're not doing anything else to it.
Okay. Hopefully this is making sense. I have some hard blooms from initial air. That's okay. That's just part of the watercolor charm. <laughs> and blooms are pretty hard to avoid, um, especially depending on like the humidity in your area, um, stuff like that. The paint, the paint can dry really fast and you just get those blooms. So that's not always under your control. It's a pretty humid day here in the Midwest. So I had lots of time to blend all of that paint together in the background. So that's partially why I had a pretty smooth gradient today. It does not always turn out like that. In the winter, it is quick. <laughs> that paint dries quickly. So just keep that in mind. Watercolor blooms are okay. It does not have to be perfect. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good. And again, like I said, you can always come back later and add more clouds um, if you feel like you need them. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, if you put a, actually, no, leave the tape there. We are going to add a little bit of land in the background here, a little bit of distant, um, these distant sort of islands and land pieces. So we've got pretty thin ones. We'll probably make them a little bit thicker just to enhance them in the, um, in the painting. But for this, you're going to mix together basically the same color as what you used in the clouds, just less water. So that's blue, brown, and a little bit of red or pink. And you're just gonna try and get as much pigment and as little water as you can just to make a really dark color. So again, blue, brown, and a little pink or red, and you'll get this extra dark blue. Like that. The brush number is a size four. All right. I think you need to add some lemon yellow, maybe in the clouds. I might go back and do that after we paint these, this land. But this is kind of a sunset after the sun has gone down, so this is more of a cool color sunset, aside from the pink. Okay, once you have that really dark blue, you're just going to, right above the horizon line, throw in kind of a wiggly line. I like to make it get slightly taller as you work toward the horizon line. And maybe one over here too. You can even water down this color just slightly and add some that are more in the distance there. Yeah, I would just say add one or two of those like that. I have such a mental block with clouds, watercolor and acrylic, just can't get them. It, um, it does take practice and I, to be honest, am not super confident with my clouds either. I think these turned out pretty well, but sometimes they don't, <laughs> they don't turn out well. And they are just hard, like I will fully admit that. They are tough. Um, and I promise it just takes practice. Just like anything else, as you know, I'm sure. Okay, so add in those little pieces of land there in the distance. When you're ready, you can take off the tape at the horizon line now. Um, it does not need to dry fully. The paint will not go anywhere. Maybe we'll experiment with adding some, like you said, some fun colored clouds here. So we can use a little pink, that same pink that we used for the sky. I'm gonna use some pink to put in some little streakies down here. Just kind of brighten up those clouds a little bit. I'm gonna do this pretty close to the horizon line because that's where the sun is hitting those clouds the most. I barely started painting for the first time a couple weeks ago. That's awesome. Great job. I am proud of you. It is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> and that's really awesome that you're getting into it. Okay, you can add some other streakies with um, yellow as well. I would concentrate that in a very couple, just a couple of spots. Something like that. I 
That's just an option for you. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But God, I'm falling into the trap of just adding more clouds here. This is not good. I gotta stop. Okay, stop, that's enough. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to paint in the water. Let's get this so that we have, so we can see everything. Now, the water reflection is essentially, because this is a really calm ocean that we had this night, um, it's a pretty good reflection of the sky. So like the colors are kind of in the same spots. Um, it's pretty blurry, but you know, you can kind of see the mirror image of the colors. So we're gonna use exactly the same colors that we just used in the sky. So if you are out of them, make some more, including the, the cloud color. So I have a good amount of pink there. I darkened my yellow for those clouds. So I'm just going to take away some of that pigment and lighten that up a bit. Gotta get some ultramarine for this the sky blue color. Running out of ultramarine already. There we go. And then we'll mix some of that cloud color. There we go. So same exact colors as we just used um, for the upper section, the sky section. And we're going to use those colors and fill in the lower section. So let's see, plan of attack here. I think we are going to fill in, let's see, I'll show you on here so that I don't just talk to you about it. Um, I think we're going to do sort of from the horizon line and work our way down. We're gonna put in this section of pink and a little bit of yellow maybe right here. And then we'll fill in the sky, this sort of sky blue color uh, at the horizon line and a little bit around it. And then we'll add in that dark um, cloud color in the other sections. And we'll probably use a dry brushing technique to pick up these highlights that you can see here, the ones that are kind of reflecting. I will kind of go over that as we do it. I do have a YouTube channel. It is linked in my bio. All of these paint and sip sessions are on there, including this one will be later. So um, if you want my YouTube handle, you can just click on the link tree in my bio and it is one of the tabs. Okay, here we go. We're gonna be brave here. And we're going to put the pink and sort of this kind of formation there. Doesn't have to be exact. Maybe a little bit of yellow around the pink. Blend those together just a little bit. Then switch to the sky blue. Put that in. Let's go kind of around here. And just add a little bit of water to it before you put it at the horizon line. So nice light blue at the horizon line. All of the colors are gonna to mix together. Don't worry about that, that's fine. And a little bit of sky blue kind of here in the corner. And fill in the rest with the dark, dark blue. We will be adding another layer over the top of this. Um, so don't really worry about how this is looking right now. <laughs> it's gonna look like a mess of colors and that is fine. Oops, sorry, you can't quite see. I know it's a little scary, but I promise we're gonna dig it out of the ugly stage. Okay, you can, like I said before, use a damp brush, a clean damp brush to blend some of these colors together if you like, if you've got some hard lines in there that you wanna blend out. And then you can use a completely dry brush. So use your paper towel, squeeze all of the water out of it. And then I like to use kind of horizontal uh, strokes and we can add these sort of highlights 
going down in the water here. You can also just add some straight across horizontal highlights. You can only do this while the paint is still wet though, so I'd recommend you do that somewhat quickly. Okay, something like that. Again, don't panic. We're gonna add more on top of this, so it's all good. <laughs> but you can see we've already got a good, a pretty decent sky um, reflection there. And we'll just enhance it as we go. Hmm. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Lifting doesn't work on me. Um, so sometimes if the paint dries too quickly, um, that can be that can be kind of why. Also, um, if your brush isn't completely dry, you really gotta squeeze all of the water out of it. That can help as well. Um, it also won't like lift every single, th it won't bring it back to the complete white of the page. It'll just make it lighter in comparison to the other colors, so. Yeah, like I said, the, the lifting won't, you can see here, this is not like the white of the page. This is just a lighter gray. So it looks brighter because of the colors around it, but it is not like, it's not the white of the page. So don't worry about that too much. Very serene. Thank you so much. Tip for getting rid of harsh lines if everything dried. So you can use a damp brush and somewhat blend that out. You might end up with a little bit more texture than you than you started with. Um, but otherwise, I would say just leave it because we're going to go over this again after it's dry. So um, we can kind of blend out the, those hard lines in the second layer. How long have you been painting? I've been painting since I was a young kid. Um, I did lots of art at home. Um, I really enjoyed it at school. And yeah, I've just always really enjoyed it. So I have had a lot of practice. Okay. I'm gonna do one little optional thing while we wait here for this, um, for the water section to dry fully, which is to add just a little wash of pink over the bottom of the sky because this is quite a bit brighter. This reflection here is quite a bit brighter than it is in the sky. So I just wanna add, um, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. And if you feel like you are gonna to get too nervous about it, don't do it. But I'm just gonna add like, um, a wash over this section of the sky. And if that sky section is completely dry, you can paint gently over it um, and not disturb the colors underneath. So I'm just painting this really lightly. I'm not going over it again. And we're just kind of brightening up this area of the sky here. and then just kind of blending that out with those streaky clouds um, as we work our way up. So again, that's completely optional. If you already feel like your um, sky and water match in their level of pinkness, <laughs> you can leave it and don't do this, but that's just an option for you if you notice that in your own painting. Do you recommend using a hairdryer to dry the paint quickly? Uh, yeah, I do. That is what I do when I paint by myself. I like to kind of have this time to talk to you guys about these paintings instead of just drying it and moving on so quickly. Um, but when I paint for myself, I definitely use a hairdryer because I don't got that kind of patience. <laughs> okay, I think my water section is mostly dry. And the main color that we're going to use to add more texture here is that cloud color. So. Again, mix more of that. You're going to get lots of practice mixing this color today. <laughs> Again, blue, brown, and pink or red. And we're going to do a very similar um, technique that we did with the clouds, where we put down a little section and blend it out with a damp brush. So I will show you 
we've got a pretty, the darkest section is kind of here where you can see that reflection of the clouds. That's kind of where we want to add this color. So from here, we flip it over. It's kind of in this little area here, and that's where we want to add these. So I'm going to use my smaller brush and just use horizontal brush strokes here. Make sure your paint is completely dry before you do this, please. And I'm just going to kind of add some sections of horizontal strokes and then clean off my brush, dry it off. And we can leave a little bit of it sort of intact, but I want to blend out a little bit of it too using a damp brush just to kind of soften those edges there. And we're just going to continue doing that. So this is the time where if you have some harsh lines or anything, you can cover those up. And just remember to use horizontal strokes here. You don't want to um, ruin the illusion of the water by using anything other than horizontal strokes. Okay. You can kind of paint around those highlights that will bring them out a little bit better. So if you were talking about how your highlights kind of weren't showing up, if you put this dark color around the highlights, they will look brighter. So that's a little tip for you. So again, just doing a little section. I missed the white color. Did you lift the paint? Yeah, it's just a lifting the paint um, while the paint is still wet. That first layer was still wet. You can also, I'll show you another lifting technique that you can use while the paint is dry in a second here, just in case you need it. Um, it doesn't work quite as well, but it can help a little bit. So you'll take a damp brush, I'll zoom you in here, and we'll just do it on uh, this area here. So you take a damp brush, it's got to be clean, but it's slightly damp, and you're just going to kind of scrub it back and forth on the small area that you want to highlight. And you're going to do that for a few seconds, and then quickly use a paper towel, and you can see that lifted. You're going to kind of dab it with a paper towel, and it will lift. And you can have varying success with that. It kind of depends on your paints. Um, but if you, <laughs> good, I'm glad I motivated you. Get that shit done. Um, but if you have those areas where you don't have quite as much highlight as you want, or you've kind of covered it up and you want to bring it back, scrub it with that damp brush for a couple seconds, and then dab it with your paper towel. I just did there. Yeah, you do need to have somewhat decent watercolor paper. Um, the Strathmore is fine. That will hold up pretty well. Um, but some cheaper watercolor paper will pill if you do that. So just proceed with caution if you're going to do that. Test it out on a little, on a smaller area before you do it on a bunch of places. Okay, so we're just going to keep adding some texture, horizontal brush strokes filling in and just keep adding layers and just keep in mind that you can continue to blend it out. You can do that lifting technique if you want to, to add your highlights back. Yeah, just continue on. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I don't know if I'm explaining this. Um, thoroughly, so let me know if you're confused at all. What brand of watercolors? It is, um, Windsor Newton. That is the brand. I have all of my art supply. Um, I'll do a plug. We're going to do a plug since you're all a captive audience here. Um, in the link in my bio, you will find my Etsy shop. I am a full-time professional artist and I sell many of the paintings that I make, most if not all of the paintings that I make because I need to make a living. So if you'd like to support me that way, if you enjoyed this live and you enjoy my art, um, it would mean so much to me if you checked that out. Um, art makes a really great thoughtful gift, so if you're looking for a gift for someone, that would be a great option for you. Um, and it just means a lot to me because this is how I pay the bills. <laughs> um, you can also find my Patreon in my link in my bio, so if you'd like to check that out, I do an extra um, tutorial very much like this in Patreon that you can only have access to there. 
And just for access to the tutorial, I think it's $3.50, $3.50 a month. Um, so that's a pretty good price for an extra bonus, you know, full length watercolor tutorial. And um, let's see what else is in there. My Amazon storefront. So if you're looking for some new art supplies and you'd like to check out my recommendations, you can find them there. I do get a little commission from that too, and it doesn't cost you anything else. So that's always really helpful for me. Um, and oh yeah, tips. If you'd like to leave me a tip for today's session, if you enjoyed it, um, you can do that via Venmo, which is listed in my bio, or there's a tip jar app at the very bottom of my link tree. And that makes it really easy to leave me a tip if you'd like to. So uh, one more time, if you'd like to do that via Venmo, you can, that is listed in my bio. Or if you click on the link in my bio and scroll to the bottom, there's a little thing called tip jar and that makes it really easy. Um, and I do appreciate tips. These are always free, but if you'd like to, if you are uh, feeling so inclined to leave me a tip, that is always um, very much appreciated. So that's all my plugs. Thank you for listening. Um, and thank you for supporting me if you choose to do so. Have you ever painted something like a phoenix? No, I don't think I have. Um, I have not really gotten into fantasy painting too much. Um, I have just always done landscapes that I have taken photos of myself. So I um, haven't really got into like surrealism or anything like that. But I feel like that would be fun to get into if I were to. The only problem would be reference photos. Um, I don't really paint from imagination. So if it's not got a reference photo, then that would be a bit hard to paint. <laughs> advice on mixing pigments for the colors you want. That really just takes practice. Um, I've had a lot of practice over the years um, color mixing. I'm fairly good at it, I would say, now because I've had so much practice, um, I can recreate colors pretty well. But just like, you know, even if you just set, spend a painting session, like trying to color match different colors, you can buy paint chips, you can, you know, take paint chips from the hardware store and color match paint chips. Um, you can just kind of find random colors around your house and try and color match them with whatever paint you're using. You can do that. It really just like practice is the main thing that helps you there. I usually paint flowers so landscapes are challenging for me. I feel you. Flowers are really fun to paint and I really enjoy painting flowers. So um, I understand you there. As you kind of finish up this texture here, one more little note, you can use any color that you have in this um, water section to add texture. So I'm going to add a little bit of just horizontal strokes with my pink down here in the pink section, just to add a little bit more interest and continue sort of showing that water texture. At what age did you start selling art and when did it become enough to make a living? So I started selling art uh, in 2020, I think that was when I kind of started. Um, so I was 23 years old at that time. Um, and it was certainly slow. I had a, I had another job, like I had a full-time job. Um, I did not just jump into doing this without, you know, kind of easing into it. Um, and then I went full time about a year later in 2021, in October of 2021, which was pretty quick. Um, I owe a lot of that to TikTok and how much sort of exposure I do get on TikTok and how kind people are in supporting me and buying my art from my Etsy shop and all that stuff. Um, and I have been full time since then. So it's been almost two years, which has been really exciting and I have loved most of it. <laughs> there are certainly some, some hard parts of it, but I, I don't regret it at all. And I'm really um, happy and feel very lucky that I'm able to do this for a living. So that's kind of the short, the short answer there. I have been painting since I um, was a kid. I've really always loved art. I didn't really think of it as a potential career until 2020. Um, but it, um, it kind of organically happened for me. I just kind of started posting on social media and got some traction that way and just kind of organically started making money. And I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe this is something that I could do. Um, so I've been doing it my whole life, but just did never considered it as a career until very recently. Have Etsy or commissions been more successful for you financially? Um, that is a good question. I would say 
Etsy, probably, just because the stuff I make on there is um, more easily producible. Commissions are often um, more elaborate paintings. They're often like larger canvases. Sometimes they're smaller, but oftentimes they're bigger and take more time. And so I can only do so many of those a year while I'm also doing kind of my other things. So um, those certainly help my income, but I would say Etsy is the main sort of source of my income. I think I was there for your third pain sip. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, also, how do you price your pieces? That's a, um, that's a great question. It is tough because art is, doesn't have like an explicit value. It's really whatever people are willing to pay for it is what it's worth. Um, and so I kind of just started like experimenting with sort of what people would pay for my art. And as time has gone on and I've gotten more talented and, and skilled and I've gotten more practice, I can kind of increase my prices because they are just kind of objectively better pieces. Um, and so you kind of experiment with, you know, how much time did this take me? Okay, so how much would I be willing to like compensate myself basically for that amount of time that this took me? Um, and make sure you're compensating yourself like for the bare minimum. And then maybe you can add a little bit on top of that if you are, if it's pretty in high demand or, um, you know, it's just something you're really proud of or, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't really have like a, <laughs> the answer to your question is I don't really know. And I just kind of feel it out. And if it's something that, sells really well and I feel like, okay, that's actually worth more or, um, you know, it's something that people are willing to pay more for, you can kind of increase because there's just no hard and fast rule. <laughs> you taught me how to watercolor from scratch and my favorite teacher so far. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I'm so glad you're getting into watercolors or you've been into watercolors. Um, do you ever paint with acrylics? Not super often. It's really not my favorite thing. I, um, they dry so fast and you can't blend and I just end up getting really frustrated. So I do sometimes, but I mostly stick with watercolor, gouache, and oil paint. That's, those are my main three. Okay, um, so the last thing, if you want to, this is kind of optional and I'm not sure if we'll kind of do the whole thing since we're getting to the end of the session. But you can add some trees down here at the bottom. I'll show you on the reference photo. This photo is taken from pretty high up. And so at the bottom here are some trees. And that will kind of help to ground the water section um, and keep, it just sort of pushes the water back. It gives that perspective. So you can paint whatever kind of trees you want there. Um, I'll paint probably some deciduous trees. Just mix a very dark, Blue gray, same color as we used for that, uh, this land here that we painted. I'm just gonna use Payne's gray for simplicity. And I'm gonna switch to a little detail brush. And we can paint in some deciduous trees. So that's just basically little dots, um, kind of formed into a rounded-ish shape. I'll zoom you in here so you can see. Any reason you're not repainting through the right side water? Um, I, I did. I think I repainted through most of it. I just kept the repainting to kind of the bottom half. We want this part up here towards the horizon line to be minimal detail because it's so far away. That will give you the perspective that you're looking for. Okay, so for these deciduous trees, I'm using a small detail brush. And around the outside, you're just kind of dotting so that you have that sort of leaf texture. And then in the middle, you can kind of fill it in loosely. Let there be a few places where the water shows through behind it. But the main texture that you want is the outside. So you're just gonna use that detail brush and just make this little dotted texture. And then you can fill it in. So you can just add a few of those, add as many as you want, really. Um, I'm probably just gonna add a few kind of going across the paper. Something like that. Do you do this on live often? 
a picture start to finish. I will probably um, be doing this more regularly now. I used to do it every Saturday. Um, I will not be able to do it next Saturday, but I believe the Saturday after I will be able to be back. So in two weeks, um, I will be doing another one, uh, theoretically. I will always post an announcement on TikTok so you'll know if they're coming. Um, I post the Thursday before and they will most likely be at this time, the same time and same day. How much will for you will be selling this artwork? Um, I'm not sure. Well, I usually post these paint and sip um, paintings on my Etsy once I finish the sketchbook and I usually sell them for like $50 um, and that includes shipping, free shipping, just because they are done as a lesson and it's not like a full finished polished painting. But um, yeah, probably about 50 bucks. All the previous paint and zips are on Etsy right now too, if you wanna check those out. It's a good way to get some art from me that is not super expensive, if you want. Let's add a little evergreen tree in here, just for funsies. Maybe fall vibes in two weeks, oh yeah. I have many, many fall paint sip paintings on my Etsy right now from last year. Um, and I'm sure we'll do more. Oh no, I did that. That's an accident. Whoopsie. Let's paint some trees over here too. I hope you've all enjoyed this um, session. I hope you've had fun. Maybe you learned something if you painted along with me, or even if you didn't, I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think. Loved it, great, so glad. I should mention as well, if you're watching this on YouTube later, um, all of the things that I've talked about are in the description of the video. So all the links that I have discussed here, you can find in the description. Thank you very much. I think you're all very talented. <laughs> and I'll show you the final painting as well once I'm done with these trees. Um, I'll take off the tape and show you the final painting, so feel free to stick around for that if you have time. I know we're at an hour, so if you need to go, feel free. paper buckled. Am I using too much water? So watercolor paper will always warp a little bit. Mine has um, for sure. You can't tell because you're looking at it top down, but almost all watercolor paper will warp a little bit just because you're adding water to paper. And even if it's the thickest watercolor paper, it'll still bend a little bit. So that's just something you have to get used to. Sometimes higher quality paper will bend less and warp less, um, but it will still warp a little bit. So <laughs> unfortunately, that's just something that happens and it's totally fine and very normal in watercolor. Your speed with the trees amazes me every time. Thank you so much. I uh, practice trees a lot. <laughs> I've painted many a tree. Uh, yeah, please do add some stars. That's a great idea. Use any white paint that you have and add some stars in there. I think that would look really cool. You could also add a flock of birds in the background if you want to. Birds are always a good thing to add. Um, to any painting where you have a lot of sky like this. I really like adding birds to paintings like that. So feel free to do that if you want to. I probably won't because we have a lot of clouds in there already, so it's fairly busy with the clouds, but um, if you'd like to, totally, you can totally do that. When did you start to paint? When I was a child. Um, I don't hate mine. Excellent, that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. And I don't think I said this at the beginning, but painting, um, people don't understand. You make so many bad paintings as an artist. I do all the time. Um, and it just kind of is part is par for the course. And you're just, if you are signing up to paint, you are signing up to make bad paintings and you'll never stop. So if you can try and, um, I know you're saying you don't hate it. And I think that's a great attitude to have, but I'm just saying for other people too, 
Try to have the attitude that you learned something, you spent this time being creative and doing something for yourself, and you're learning, even if you don't like the painting, you learn something from it, so um, the next time you'll maybe like your painting a little bit better. Um, nobody is going to come out here and make perfect paintings every time, unless you're a savant, and I am not one of those, nor are most of you, because it's super rare. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that's just my little soapbox there to stand on because I think a lot of times people, especially adults who start watercolor or painting, just generally in adulthood, you feel like you should be good at it. Um, and you don't have to be, and you probably won't be if you're just starting out. It's something that you have to learn and have to practice. So, and that is okay and good. So there's the final painting. I'm gonna take off the tape here, which is always, honestly, the best part, be real. If you find your tape is ripping your paper, heat it up with a hairdryer for a few seconds before you pull it. That will help, um, that will help the tape release the paper. It won't rip it as much. I find this tape from Blick is pretty good. It, won't, it doesn't rip any of my paper. So you can also try some different masking tapes. I decorate books and when it turns out good, it makes me happy to look at it. Yeah, exactly. I like your clouds. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining me. I always really appreciate you all being here and painting with me. Um, Remember to sign and date your painting so that you can look back on it later. I always regret not putting a date on my painting if I forget because it's always just good to look back and, you know, a year from now, five years from now, see kind of where you were at at this point in time. One other little tip for you. I have a little smudge here um, that I kind of, because I've dipped my hand in my paper, in my paint. Um, if you wait for that to dry fully and then you use a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand it, you can kind of sand that pigment away. So that's what I'll be doing a little bit later when that's fully dry, just to kind of get it back to that white of the paper. Okay, let's get a little pen here. There we go. Finished painting. So like I said before, this live will be uploaded to YouTube um, later today, probably. It does take me a little while, but it'll be up later today or tomorrow at the latest. So you can check that out. My YouTube channel is linked in my bio, so you can find my channel there. If you click on the little link tree, there's a tab in there that says YouTube. It'll take you directly to my channel. All of the previous paint and sips are up there too. If you wanna try another lesson, feel free. Um, also in the link tree in my bio is my Etsy shop. I would love, love, love if you check out my Etsy shop. It would mean so much to me if you want to support me that way. Uh, my Patreon is also in my bio if you'd like to check that out. I do more tutorials like this on there um, that you can only access on Patreon and some other little art gifts as well if you want to choose those tiers. Um, I also have my art supply recommendations in my bio if you need my suggestions. Would highly recommend, um, you know, those, it's all the supplies that I would recommend to you. Um, and if you'd like to leave me a little tip or a gift today, you can do that. The Venmo that I have listed in my bio is mine. And then you can also click on the link tree in my bio and scroll to the bottom. There's a little tab called tip jar and you can find, um, and just makes it easy to tip. Whatever you want to give is totally fine. Um, that is optional, but always very much appreciated. And like I said before, the next live will probably be two weeks from today, same time. I will post about it on 